So I built up a super sweet Colnago C60 um, a few days back and just kind of wanted to share a few of the highlights with the bike. And um, yeah, it was, we built it up with uh, uh, the Campanolo um, EPS 11 speed record group. Um, other than that, you know, some rotor cranks, 3T bar and stem. Um, and this was a little tool that I made to route the wires. This is actually my little tool that I route the wires on my DI2. I just stuck a magnet in one and then the other I just took a derailleur cable and glued a magnet to it. And then this is the little rods that Campanolo makes to set your, you know, the internal battery here, which is the, the way we were going to build it up there. Um, wires are all you know nice color coded so it's pretty pretty simple to plug everything in uh, and then you know the battery comes with lots of bits and pieces there but um, you know basically to start there I um, just threaded the rod into the into the battery there and you know what we're wanting to do here is just it basically attaches through the water bottle bolts there on the C2 or the bolt holes I guess you could say so um, you know, just tape the top of the rod there to give us a, you know, a, the correct depth to stick it into to thread the bolts in. And so then, just uh, undid that and then prep the wires. So we're gonna, you know, basically put the wires into the frame first and then drop the battery in and attach it. So um, basically, I just kind of tape the wires temporarily together. To you know, there's four of them and two sets of different lengths basically, and then the the actual piece there that the magnets attached to is the charging cable basically so started out threaded that in this is all you know just I didn't speed it up it's just real time just to show how quickly and easily it is to do um, you may notice I've got the the um, frame clamped on the top tube there but I've got it padded up pretty well to you know soft cloth and some bubble wrap so you know I generally hate to uh, attach a frame anywhere other than a, or a bike in the stand other than from the seat post but you know sometimes you gotta you know it's all well, you always want to wire it up first and then get your seat post in and get all your wires connected before you start you know wrenching on things it just makes it ten times easier there so um, got our wires routed and a couple of little o-rings that you know come with the little battery kit there to keep that from you know I think one end of the battery is going to kind of sort of rest up against the inside of the seat tube so that'll just keep it from smacking around making noise if you you know hit some really big bumps or whatever so just thread the little rod back in and you got your tape to show you the correct depth um, you know one other little thing I probably would have made a mark to show exactly the front you know or you know it wasn't too difficult you could kind of see through the the seat post, um, the water bottle bolt holes there, so you, I could basically visually see inside of there where to start it. And so, you know, basically what you attach that battery with is a stud. It's kind of a double sided stud there. It's four millimeter on one side, and then the standard five millimeter with a hex, I think like a nine millimeter hex in the center portion. And basically you just thread those little things in there and you know catches the battery and then you have uh, once they're cinched down you have a little stud basically sticking out you attach your water bottle cage with a nut you know kind of a it's actually a recessed nut with an uh, allen bolt so it basically looks just like a standard water bottle bolt if you didn't know any better but yeah it's kind of a slick little system for you know attaching the battery as far as you know kind of I guess differentiates from the Shimano system where the battery is clipped in the seat post or you know we've done them several different ways or we've just kind of attached them in with packing material but you know that's this is definitely a solid secure mount um, you know I've done hundreds of DI2 installs and this is probably I, don't know, I think maybe the second um, can't be EPS install but this is the first one that I've done with an internal battery so I just wanted to kind of highlight what I did here there are some really good videos on uh, Campy's website which I'll add those in the description so you can kind of 
see the several different methods that they have. But that's my little derailleur cable with the magnet that I just made that I epoxied on the end, which I actually made a couple. And the other one I think actually worked a little better. This and the magnet ended up coming off at some point, not here. It actually worked to get this up through the uh, hole there in the seat tube. And basically what I'm doing here is pulling pulling the uh, routing the charging port, which, um, you know, I watched it in the video, and that's where they mounted it. And so, I, you know, it's everything went pretty smooth. I pulled it up through there and got it through. And, um, you know, once I had it through there, I attached it fine and everything. Then I kind of thought about it for just a second. And I just, you know, I was like, well, how am I going to get the... Uh, you know, I need another hole for the to for the the um, front derailleur wire to charge. You know, to work that. And so, um, yeah, it's at the point here where I got this cinch down, started looking for the where I was going to route the derailleur wire. I started looking around on the frame, and um, you know, come to find out that you know underneath was a there was the you know the basically that's where I should have mounted it so it wasn't really a big deal I just switched it to the bottom there and um, you know then had our use the other hole for the access for the front derailleur wire which you know no big deal um, so the way this frame is it, it, it it's an actual lugged carbon frame so there's actually access you know inside of there I can go from the seat post to the down tube so it was easy to route the wires there and then the rest of them went through the seat tube but into that chain stay I had to go um, outwards there but I'll cover that base here in just a second um, that little hole there was a booger to get that wire through so I actually had to take a jeweler's file and just take a little bit of material off that uh, you know it's, it, it has that shape it was just a very slight amount just to get that the wire through because it was a very tight fit so that was really as far as this whole build the only really difficulty was getting that in um, you know got all the rest of the wires routed through and then you you pull the little magnet off of the um, out of the battery so it has a little strap there that you just attach to the frame to turn it off there that's your on and off switch essentially so um, yeah, we got our got all the route wires routed. So now it's time to just start bolting it together. Got my got the fork on, and you know again this you know we cut it to the maximum height, and I really like the Colnago's compression plug there. It's nice and long, so you know easy to install. But it's one of those things that gives you a little extra security. You know some are pretty short, and it seems like it's right at the you know where they end is right at the spot where a fork could typically break off in a wreck or you know hit a bump really hard but that one sits nice and deep down there so that's nice We've got our little compression ring and then it's got the, there's a little small um, you know point twenty five millimeter little shim there which it, they just had it included in the kit so I went ahead and put it in under the dust cap and there's actually two dust caps so anyway, that was the wire there before I put the cranks in that was exposed, and I just put some Gorilla Tape. You know, a lot of times I'll use a make a plastic shim just to, you know, that pops in there to keep it out of the way. But you know, I figured this would be just a little easier. That stuff sticks pretty well, so it'd be easy to get in, get on and off or servicing later. But you know, main thing you just want to keep that wire off the, you know, from a spindle which is open. You know, this and there was no the the um, EPS group came with a little dust shield but it's for a campy bottom bracket so it was just you know it was too small to work with this rotor crank um, so we're putting in this is what they call the 4130 bearing which you know allows you to use a 30 millimeter spindle you know in your typical BB30 type crank and then the inside diameter of the cup that threads into the Colnago frames is 41 millimeters which is the size you would use for your typical press fit bottom bracket so that's basically how you would adapt this frame to a 30 millimeter spindle system so um, yeah got our got our bearings in pressed in and everything and so um, you know, just greasing up that put a little film of grease on that aluminum spindle and you know the 
one nice thing with the rotor cranks is that it does have the little um, adjuster on the non-drive side there so you know once you put it in it's easy to fine-tune your bearing adjustment there you know with those orange seals these the cranks take you know a little break in time to get them to where they spin super freely but you know it's super easy to adjust the uh, your uh, bearing tension or you know the where the you know that little adjuster sets up to the bearing so you're not you know you're not using the wavy washers or you know it's not really you know it'd be pretty tough to tighten it so tight that you side loaded the bearing so you know it's a pretty easy system you just bolt it together just the little um, the little adjuster there on the non-drive side and then it's got a little lock and you just cinch it down with I think a two millimeter allen wrench there so pretty straightforward um, you know this this system the way we built up this was one little minor hurdle that you know the customer customer wanted um, the elliptical rings on there which you know I'm I'm not a huge fan of them I you know there's I'm not trying to tell anybody not to use them they're you know I think it kind of depends on the person you know as far as how beneficial they are your maybe your pedaling style and such but um, you know, they're, the one thing that's negative about them, they do affect, affect the shift quality. So, you know, that's just one kind of downfall of having an elliptical ring is they are going to, you know, they're going to reduce some of your, your shift quality in, on your front derailleur there. So, um, you know, we had a little, I had to kind of improvise a little on the front derailleur setup on this bike because the... Um, the way the EPS front derailleur attaches, it's not not your typical, you know, bolt that threads in, you know, through the brazon and then goes into the the body. But I don't know, we'll cover that base here in just a second. That's a little inside look of the, uh, the EPS shifter. That's where your wire comes in. There's a little cover. The wire routes around there, and kind of goes out there. But anyway. Um, the Colnago comes with the little chain catcher, but since the you know the derailleur mounted up so high, I had plenty of room underneath, so I went ahead and mounted it up just because you know sometimes these elliptical rings, even if everything's adjusted just right, they do have a you know tendency maybe to throw the throw the chain off potentially sometimes if you hit it just right. But that's the chain catcher that actually came with the bike, so we got that that on there, and you know I didn't go through everything, but Got some nice uh, carbon bore ultra wheels, which were you know, kind of complete the package. Um, but, uh, yeah, ended up being a really super sweet bike. Um, went out, put some pedals. You know, the customer hadn't picked out a seat yet, but I bolted one on, took it out, and yeah, it uh, this thing rides like a dream. It it definitely is one of the better riding uh, bikes I've ever ridden for sure. So anyway, yeah, that's it, and thanks for watching.